Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving acceleration, Newton's second law of the inclined plane, two objects, the pulley, and in this case, there is no friction. Here is a situation we have. We have our inclined plane. It is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. We have two objects, M1, 10 kilograms, M2, 6 kilograms. M2, excuse me, M1 is on the inclined plane. There is no friction. The coefficient of friction mu between the object and the inclined plane is zero, so there is no friction. The two objects are attached to each other by the massless inelastic string, which goes over the massless frictionless pulley. That means when we calculate the acceleration of M1 and M2 and the tension in the string, we can ignore the mass of the string and any energy that is lost in turning the pulley. In order to get the acceleration and the tension in the string, we are going to use Newton's second law. The sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. That means the acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass. Now, because the objects are attached to each other by the inelastic string, when um, M1 starts to accelerate, M2 will start to accelerate. When M2 starts to accelerate, M1 will start to accelerate. They're going to have the acceleration, the same acceleration. The acceleration of M1 is going to be equal to the acceleration of M2, and therefore we can apply Newton's second law to these objects as a system of objects. All right? Now, you can see, in order to calculate the acceleration, we need the mass. Well, we've been given the masses 10 and 6. We need to also sum up the forces. Well, before we do that, we're going to draw in all the forces. Before we draw in all the forces, I like to draw in for M1 because it's on the inclined plane, my x-axis and my y-axis. And then I like to choose my positive direction for M1 and M2. And I like to choose up, typically up the inclined plane as positive, and then over the pulley and down as also positive. So up the plane and down for M2. It's going to be our positive direction, and I like to draw an arrow like that. Now, I don't actually know yet which way these two objects are going to accelerate. Is it going to be up and over, and M2 is going to go down, or is it going to be up and over, and M1 is going to go down the plane? But we will soon figure that out. Okay, is it going to be positive acceleration or negative acceleration? Okay, now we can draw in the forces. The first one easy, M1G. The second one pretty easy, M2G. Straight down the gravitational force for each of those objects. Now they're attached to the string. They're each attached to the string. So there's a tension force acting up in the negative direction for M2, and there's a tension force acting up the ramp in the positive direction for M1. Now M1 is not falling through the inclined plane, so to speak. So there must be a normal force. A normal force acts perpendicular to the surface of the inclined plane. And we draw it right like that along the positive y axis. OK? So therefore, you can see we have drew, drawn, in, drawn in all the forces that are acting on those two objects. Now you will notice that M1G is not acting on either the y or the x axis. So therefore, we need to break M1 G into its components because part of it is going to be acting along the y-axis and we will label that as M1GY, the y component of M1G and part of that force will be acting parallel to the x-axis and I like to call that M1GX, the component of M1G that is acting along the x-axis. Okay, now you will notice we have decomposed this vector, excuse me, we have decomposed this vector into its x and y components. We have a right triangle and we have these two angles. This angle is 25 degrees and by similar triangles, so is this angle. So we know this angle is 25 degrees. We have a right triangle, we know our angles and we can use our trig function sine and cosine to determine or to calculate the value of M1GX and M1GY. M1GY is adjacent to the angle, adjacent is cosine, so M1GY is equal to M1G times the cosine of theta. M1GX is opposite this angle, therefore we use the sine function and an M1GX is equal to M1G sine of theta. Okay, so now we've done everything, drawn in the forces, determined the positive direction, 
decomposed M1G, figured out M1G, Y, and X, and now we can sum up the forces. But before we do that, I just like to move M1G, X. It is a vector. As long as I don't change its magnitude or its direction, I can move it anywhere I want, and I like to just move it right up here because then I can see that it is the X component of M1G that is acting down the incline plane, trying to pull, so to speak, M1, mass M1, down the incline plane, the X component of M1G, part of M1G. All right, now we can sum up the forces. So that means the acceleration is equal to M1 plus M2, we know the masses, and we're gonna sum up the forces. I like to start right here, M2G, M2G is acting in the positive direction, so I put M2G just like that. Now, I could write in the tension forces, but you will notice, because they're attached by this inelastic string, they're going to be equal in magnitude. The tension along this string is going to be equal in all places, and FT on M2 acts in the negative direction, and the tension force on M1 acts in the positive direction, so that means that those two forces are going to cancel each other out. We have minus FT plus FT plus FT and minus FT is zero. Now, the last force we have is M1GX. M1GX is acting in the negative direction. So I'm going to put down here M2G, which is in the positive direction, minus M1GX. Now let's just see, it does all of that make sense. We really just have two forces. We have M2G pulling in the positive direction, and we have M1GX pulling in the negative direction. So there you go. That is the equation that we would use for the acceleration of this frictionless system. Now we also know that M1GX is M1G sine theta, so I'm gonna substitute that in. And you can see this is the weight of M2G, this is the X component of M1G, and whichever of those two is bigger. If M2G is bigger, we're going to get acceleration in the positive direction. If M1GX is bigger, then we're going to get acceleration in the negative, negative direction. And let's go to the next slide and figure that out. I can hardly wait, positive or negative. Now when we go to the next slide, I'm just going to bring this equation with us. And I'm going to factor out the G. So I'm just going to have M2 minus M1 sine theta. And I have my G out here that I factored out. Now, we know everything. We know M2, M1, and we know G, and we know the sine of theta. So we can calculate the acceleration, positive or negative. Let's see. Okay, we can plug the numbers in. G is 9.8. M2, 6 minus 10 times the sine of 25 divided by the sum of the two masses. And you will notice that when you do that, you get positive 1.09. That means the acceleration, now normally we don't write down the positive, but it's implied, but I put it in here for emphasis. This whole system of these two objects is going to accelerate at a rate of 1.09 meters per second squared in the positive direction. That is because M2G is greater than M1GX. And you can see that right here. The sine of 25 is about 0 0.4. 0 0.4 times 10 is 4. 6 minus 4 is a positive number. 6 minus 4 is 2. Okay, so we're going to get a positive number times 9.8 divided by 16. You get positive 1.09. Now, how can we make it accelerate in the negative direction? What could we change? Well, we could decrease the mass of M2. We could increase the mass of M1. Or the other thing I'd just like to show you is we could increase this angle. At some point, as we increase the angle, M1, well, as we increase this angle, M1GX is going to get bigger and bigger. And at some point, it will get big enough to cause the objects to accelerate in the negative direction. So let's just say, for example, we chose 45 degrees instead of 25. Well, the sine of 45 is 0 0.7. 0 0.7 times 10 is 7. 6 minus 7 is negative, approximately negative 1. 
times 9.8 divided by 16, and you would get that the objects would accelerate in the negative direction with an acceleration of 0 0.66 meters per second if we increase this angle from 25 to 45 degrees. All right, so really you don't know ahead of time, but you have to calculate the acceleration and see if you get a positive or a negative number. If it's 25, it's negative. If you increase it at some point, it's going to change and you're going to get negative acceleration. Okay, so that's the difference between positive and negative acceleration in this case. Now, I said we're also going to figure out the tension, so let's go and do that. On the last, on the last slide here, I have Newton's law. I brought all my values with us. In order to calculate the tension, we're going to apply Newton's second law to each of these objects separately, one at a time, not both together like we did to calculate the acceleration. So for m1, we're going to sum up the forces. We have positive Ft and minus m1gx. So you can see we have positive Ft minus m1gx is equal to the mass of 1 times the acceleration of 1, which is 9 point, excuse me, 9 point 1, 1 1.09. Now I'm going to solve for Ft, which means I'm just going to add m1gx to both sides. And if I solve for Ft, plug the numbers in, you get 52.3 newtons. That's the tension in the string. Now I'm going to also do that as a check for m2 because I better get the same tension. Because we said the tension is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. For m2, we have Ft in the negative direction. We have m2g in the positive direction, and that's going to be equal to the mass of number 2 times its acceleration. Now, I'm going to uh, solve this for Ft. I'm going to subtract F m2g from both sides, multiply the whole equation by minus 1, and you get that Ft is equal to m2g minus m2a. All right? And you will notice that this m2g, this g is 9.8. I just want to point out this m2a, this acceleration is 1.09. This is the acceleration of the objects that we calculated. If you plug the values in, you get 52.3. And very nicely, these two values are equal. And that tells you also that you probably have the correct acceleration because you use the acceleration in both cases to calculate the tension. All right? So there, we feel pretty good. We got the acceleration. We know when it's positive. When it could be negative, we calculate the tension, we have the same tension, and therefore we probably got the right answer for the acceleration. Okay? So there you go. I think that's pretty straightforward. You do have to kind of just follow those steps, draw the forces in, get the components for our M1G. Okay? Sum up the forces. Watch out for your negative and positive signs. Make sure you get the right acceleration, negative or positive, and then you can do the tension in the string also like that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, you could subscribe to my channel, get all of my awesome physics videos. Give me a thumbs up down below there, write me a nice comment, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.